I have always loved getting people out on a gravel road and letting them see the farm life firsthand. Whether it's in the field at our full-time farming jobs or here at home on our own little cattle ranch. So now I'll bring the camera along and you sit back and ask the questions. Let's explore this Midwestern farming and ranching lifestyle together. This is your channel. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. Good morning, everybody. We are planting corn. It's actually Wednesday morning. We've been planting Monday and Tuesday, and we've had a good run the last couple days. We got over 200 acres done on Monday. We got 318 acres done yesterday, which is pretty darn good for a 16 row planter. We have not ever had seed firmers on our planter before, but we decided to give it a try on half of the planter this year so we can have a side-by-side -side trial across all of our acres on the effectiveness or uneffectiveness of seed firmers. Now a seed firmer is a really simple piece of equipment. Really all it does is glide through the furrow after the seed is dropped and just make sure that that seed is pressed firmly down into the bottom of the furrow. Once in a while you'll get some seeds that get hung up before they hit the bottom of the furrow and a quarter of an inch of depth makes a lot of difference. Now planting corn and doing a good job raising corn is all about consistency. You want every seed to be spaced exactly the same distance away from the seed next to it. You want every seed to germinate and you want every seedling to come out of the ground at the exact same moment. So what we're trying to do is minimize any deviation possible with our equipment as we're going along and planting the corn. We want to do everything as identically as we can to the seed before it. So the idea behind the seed firmer is just to make sure that every seed is just pressed firmly down into the bottom of the furrow so that you have consistent seed to soil contact and consistent depth of each seed. Now one thing I have heard guys complain about with seed firmers is that they tend to ball up with mud if conditions are really wet. And generally I would say, well, you shouldn't be planting if it's wet, but right now we kind of don't have a choice. It's getting late and we gotta get this done. So anyway, we need to get out periodically and check on those seed firmers, check on the gauge wheels as well, but mainly make sure that those seed firmers are not collecting mud on the sides and the bottom. And uh, that could actually disrupt the consistency of the seed in the furrow if you're dragging dirt along with your seed firmer. The seed firmers are made of plastic and they're designed to glide right over top of the seed without moving it at all. If you get all balled up with dirt, you can actually screw up your seed spacing by moving things around with the seed firmer after you've dropped the seeds in the right place to begin with. We'll just get out and check on those seed firmers right now. Well, things are looking pretty good back there. Um, there's no dirt, mud built up on the bottom of the seed firmers. Uh, a little bit around the top of them and on the sides towards the top, which I don't worry too much about. Just a tiny amount. You really don't want any build up around the bottom of the firmer though where it's touching the seed. One piece of technology that we're trying out for the first time this year is the Smart Firmer for precision planting, which is actually a seed firmer that has some sensors in it that can tell you some information about what's going on beneath the soil surface right there in the furrow where you're dropping seed. And one thing that the Smart Firmer is able to tell you is soil moisture and soil temperature. I guess that's two things the Smart Firmer is able to tell you. It does show you organic matter and CEC, but we're really interested in the furrow moisture and the soil temperature right now because the soil temperature is only 48 degrees right where we're dropping the seed. That's really cold. We're hoping for a reading of about 30% for soil moisture and we've been anywhere from 45 to 50%. It's really wet. We've got just about another three or four acres of this hybrid that I've got in the planter right now. And then we're gonna throw the next hybrid in.
Well, it's been a good day so far, and now I'm over here on an 80 that is actually bean stubble with cover crop seeded onto it. And the cover crop's coming pretty good in spots. It's a little thin in other spots. We've had a bad spring to get things going like that. But we're no-tilling corn right into it, and it's working really nicely. I'm excited to see how this goes. I'm running a little more down pressure on the row cleaners. And the reading on the Smart Firmer for the clean furrow category is running really high. So we're doing a good job here. There's not any residue making it into the furrow. We're going to keep rocking along and see how good we can do and how much we can get done before the weather changes. It is 4.05 a.m. Jeremy's on his way to get some more seed corn. We have been planting since 6.15 yesterday morning, I guess you would call it now. Anyway, there's a storm approaching on the radar, but it keeps sliding south and missing us and falling apart a little bit as it approaches, but then it keeps back building and it looks like it's going to hit us again. So we're just putting a small amount of seed in the planter at a time. We don't want to end up with 100 acres of seed left in this planter if we get rained out long enough that we need to change our game plan. But we're on our last field of corn right now. We need until about 9 a.m. to get this done. Like I say, it's just after 4 right now. I don't think it's going to happen, but man, that would be great. It would be awesome to get done planting corn. Hey, it's 10 minutes after 5 in the a.m. We're rained out, parking in the shed, letting the tractor cool off. Anyway, I'm a little tired. I'm going to go do morning hog chores and probably go to bed for a little while. See you later. Hey, everybody. It is Tuesday morning, about 1045, and I am quite surprised to be planting corn right now. I checked this field last night about 5 o'clock, and it was nice and dry and dusty on top, but it was mucky underneath and it was supposed to be raining overnight into this morning and we got up this morning at the crack of dawn and it was not raining and the rain was still a ways off so we came and checked the field again obviously conditions weren't great but we saw a window of opportunity here to get this corn planted before the rain starts up again so we shallowed the depth up just a little bit we're not running the row cleaners nearly as aggressively as I like to to get the trash out of the way. Um, we're kind of holding the row cleaners up a little bit so that we are leaving some of the dry dirt on top so that it doesn't stick to the gauge wheels and the disc openers as much. Um, we're doing what we got to do to get this in. Right now I'm actually running 6.4 miles an hour. The spacing and the singulation isn't as good as I would like, but the rain is already bearing down on us. The, windows wet on the side of the tractor and starting to mist a little bit so we are currently at the point of assigning more value to getting done than to doing a perfect job you know when you think about it as much as this year is a pain in the neck the way the spring is going with the bad weather and the poor conditions there's always a silver lining in every cloud and what I was just thinking about this morning is being under the pressure that we have been this spring with the late start and the wet weather all along and having trouble getting the crop in in a timely fashion. It's actually forced us to try some things that we would never normally try. And we're going to learn some things this year. We're going to learn what happens when you plant six and a half miles an hour and the seed sense monitor is telling you that your spacing is not as good as it should be 
and your singulation isn't quite as good as it should be. We're going to be able to go back here once the corn is up and take a look at it and see how far off the spacing actually is in reality, how many doubles and skips we've really got. We're going to see what effect having some trash in the furrow has. So like I say, we're going to learn a lot of things this year. We're going to learn what effect, if any, the, uh, the seed firmers have. And we're going to learn what effect they have when you're running in conditions that are a little too wet. you got to look for the positives, folks, because there always is some, regardless of how everything looks. I would also like to draw your attention to this. It is the 21st of May, and the soil temperature at planting depth is 45 to 46 degrees. Guys, that's ridiculous. Well, I can hardly believe it, guys, but we got all the corn planted. It's just starting to sprinkle a little bit here. The wind's picking up. It's unbelievably cold outside. It must be 50 degrees out and the wind's just howling. 30 mile an hour winds, it's terrible. But during the next rainy week, we'll get the planter converted over to plant soybeans and we'll be ready to do that once the weather clears off. Until then, thanks for watching, thanks for riding along, and we'll see you next time.